What we want to look at now is a method for calculating surface area across a surface using double integrals. Now we start by considering a surface, um, you know, z equals xy, f of xy, for example. And I have a point of tangency here. So let's suppose that there is a plane, a tangent plane. And let's suppose the point of tangency for this plane in the surface is x naught, y naught, z naught, just something arbitrary. So the plane and the surface share this point. Now here's what I want to do. From this point, I want to um, go parallel to the x-axis and go to another point. In other words, now I've, I've drawn these lines here. I've got these orange lines passing through the point. And what I want to do is from that point, I want to go parallel to the x-axis and get another point. So I'm going to go x naught plus a, a distance, delta xk, let's say. And then I'll keep the y the same. And then I get a new z. I guess I'll call this z sub k. OK, so there. So I went from one point to the other. Now, I'm going to make a vector out of that. So what I want to do, now remember, I went from the point x naught, y naught, z naught to another point on the plane, not on the surface. I'm actually on the plane. So I'm just, I'm just getting an equation for the line, the line of tangency, that line segment. But what I'm going to do is make a vector out of it. And I'll call that vector vector A. And I subtract the component. So I take the terminal side minus the initial side. x naught plus delta x sub k minus x naught. That's just delta x sub k. Now y naught minus y naught is 0. And then I've got z sub k minus z sub 0. Okay. So that is vector A. And so now what I have here is I have a vector parallel to this vector. Now, um, I want to I make an observation here. Notice that I, I could do this. I, I could do this with uh, vector A. I could say, well, I'm going to write this this way. Delta x sub k, 0. And then over here, with this zk minus z naught, let me write this this way. zk minus z naught, and let me divide the... Let me divide the bottom. Let me divide it by delta x sub k and also multiply the top by delta x sub k. So what I've done there is really nothing. I've just multiplied by delta x sub k over delta x sub k. So really I multiplied by 1. Now remember, what we, what we have there is this situation. Let's just kind of examine what's going on here. We've got... Let's just look at the x-axis and the z-axis. And what we had was we had this point here. This was our initial point, x naught, y naught, z naught. And we went up to this point over here. And what we, noted, what we got was we got a line that connects those two points. Now, this line was a special line. It was on the tangent plane. In other words, if we find the slope of that line, that is the partial with respect to x. So that's the partial of f with respect to x. That's what that is. Because notice, if we, if we look at this, this is delta x sub k. Up here is x sub k minus x naught. That's this part right here. That's what that is. So notice we have the change in y over the change in x, or the change in this case of z over the change in x. Well, that is the slope of this line. That's the slope of that tangent line. So what I'm saying is we could rewrite this as delta x sub k comma 0, and this is the partial with respect to x delta x sub k. And I'm, for, I'm being a little bit sloppy. It's the partial 
of f with respect to x of x naught, y naught. But I'll just leave that off and just put that there, and we'll just understand that. So there is this vector a that I can write that way. Now, we could play this same game with the vector y. I could go on the y direction, and in fact, we'll look at that. But let's, let's just suppose I want to go in the parallel to the y-axis, and I do that exact same procedure. So here's what I get. I, I go from x naught, y naught, z naught, and I go to this new point, which I'm keeping x naught constant. Now I have y naught plus, and let's just call this the same thing, delta y sub k. And then I go all the way over to, let's say, z sub l, for example. Now, if I make a vector out of that, let's call that vector b. Well, what I'm going to get is 0, because x naught minus x naught, 0. Then I get delta y sub k for the y. And then here I get z sub l minus z sub 0. And there's my vector. And I'll do the same thing this time that I did before. I'll say this vector b is going to be 0, delta y sub k. And then here, I've got z sub l minus z sub 0. And I'm dividing by delta y sub k and multiplying by delta y sub k. And using the same argument as before, we can see, well, this is just 0, delta y sub k. And then we have the partial with respect to y, delta y sub k. Now, so we have two vectors. Now, let's, that, now, these vectors are parallel to the vectors that I'm showing here. Now, let me, let me just do this. I, what I want to do, I want to think about a parallelogram formed by these two vectors. Now, this parallelogram is on the tangent plane. It's on that plane. Now, we know that we can find the area of that parallelogram by finding the magnitude of the cross product of those two vectors. So, let's do that. Let's find the magnitude of the cross product. So, first thing I'll do, I'll just get the cross product. Okay, so here I go. I've got I, J, K, and then uh, I'm doing A cross B. So, let's see what this is going to be. This is going to be delta X sub K, zero, and this is partial delta X sub K. And then for the B vector, I've got zero delta y sub k, and then partial with respect to y, delta y sub k. Now, so I'm going to find this, take the magnitude, and that's going to be the area of that little parallelogram that is on the tangent plane. So let, let's just see what this is, first of all. Okay, So I've got negative fx delta x sub k, delta y sub k. That's when you take out the first column. Okay. Then I've got negative, put it in front. Now I'm taking out the middle column, and I've got f of y, and then, I mean not f of y, f of sub y, delta x sub k, delta y sub k. And then that's all of that. And then comma, now we take out the last column, and it looks like we just got delta x sub k, delta y sub k. Okay, so there's my vector right there. Or that's my cross product. Now here's what I want to do. I want to take the magnitude. Now, so, so here I go. Let, let's take the magnitude of a cross b. Okay, so that's going to be the square root of fx squared delta x sub k squared, delta y sub k squared, minus fy squared, delta x sub k squared, delta y sub k squared, plus delta x sub k squared, delta y sub k squared. Okay. So the square root of all that. Now, 
Delta X and delta Y are both positive, so I can just factor those out, take the square root, and not worry about absolute value. But here's what we get. We get the square root of FX squared, FY squared plus 1. And out here is delta X sub K, delta Y sub K. Now, this represents the area of this parallelogram on the uh, tangent plane. And imagine it to be very small. That surface area of that tangent plane is very much like the surface area of the surface around that point, x naught, y naught, z naught. It's very much like that. Now, what we do, of course, in calculus is we use the integral to add up a bunch of those things. In other words, we take the limit as these little areas get smaller and smaller and smaller. In fact, they go to zero. So we're taking the limit, and when we do, what we get is a double integral. We get a double integral over our region, and it's going to be fx squared plus fy squared plus 1 and the area, dx, dy, or dy, dx. So this is what we use to calculate surface area with a double integral.